NHK World. A stand of bamboo thrusts upwards towards the sky. The stems are slender and elegant. Their surface a vibrant fresh green. The leaves rustling softly in the breeze. For people in Japan, the beautiful colour and gentle whisper of bamboo have a special place in their hearts. Bamboo can be fashioned into numerous everyday items and is even eaten as a food. It's a plant that has played a key role in people's lives for centuries. Attractive and durable, it's an important material for the implements used in the tea ceremony and many other aspects of traditional Japanese culture. Since ancient times, bamboo has featured in legends and folk tales as a plant with remarkable properties. And to the present day, it remains an important element in seasonal festivals and religious rituals. On this edition of Begin Japanology, We'll look at the many uses and attractions of this versatile plant. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. This week our theme is bamboo. Here's a piece of bamboo. As you can see, it's hollow inside, which makes it comparatively light. You'll also see it has joints at regular intervals, which makes it very strong at the same time. Bamboo can be cut into thin strips, much thinner than this actually, and when it's cut into thin strips it's both flexible and resilient, and these properties give it numerous different uses. It's used to make many different kinds of items, and it's been an essential element in the Japanese aesthetic since ancient times. Bamboo is actually one of the most important materials in Japan, as we'll see in our first video. Bamboo is a group of plants that are members of the grass family. It grows widely throughout Asia, and there are more than 600 species in Japan. Because it is so light, strong, and easy to work, bamboo makes a very versatile material. Since ancient times, it has played a central role in people's lives in Japan. The city of Kyoto was founded over a thousand years ago. Walking through the streets you can feel a sense of history. Bamboo is incorporated as a material both inside and outside many of the buildings. The walls of many houses have low curving fences known as inuyarai, which protect the walls and stop them from getting splattered with mud. They make a graceful addition to these traditional street scenes. Shishi odoshi are lengths of bamboo that slowly fill with water and then empty out, making a knocking sound. In the past, they were used to scare away animals and birds, but now people just like the rhythmic sound. Bamboo can be worked in many different ways to fashion everyday objects. Baskets are woven from a lattice of bamboo. They're popular with farmers carrying fresh produce from the fields. Finely woven bamboo sieves are used for washing food ingredients or for serving food at the table. Bamboo is also used in many crafts. These baskets are for displaying flower arrangements. Bamboo's innate flexibility is put to superb use in weaving these elegant forms. Mm. 
Bamboo holds liquids without leaking, and because it is hollow inside, it can be easily fashioned into cups. The young shoots of the bamboo plant are a popular food. They're in season from March to May. They have to be dug out while they're still under the ground. After they pierce the surface, they become too coarse and hard and lose their flavour. Known in Japanese as takenoko, these tender young bamboo shoots are considered one of the supreme delicacies of spring. This exclusive Kyoto restaurant specialises in dishes featuring bamboo shoots. The shoots are dug up in the morning, peeled straight away and boiled until they're tender. Just like fish, bamboo shoots easily lose their freshness. It requires great care to bring out the full depth of their flavour. Bamboo shoots lose their subtle flavour within hours of being dug up, so they have to be cooked as soon as possible. Prepared this way, they are considered an essential taste of spring. Japanese cuisine always emphasises seasonal flavours, so bamboo shoots are a key ingredient. And because they are high in fiber and low in calories, they are much appreciated by people who like to eat healthily. The sheaths around the outside of the shoots are also used. Because they have antibiotic properties and help to prevent foods from spoiling, they have been used since the olden days as a natural wrapper for carrying foods such as rice balls. Traditional Japanese umbrellas are decorated in many different colors. The beautiful designs are painted onto Japanese paper and stretched across a framework of resilient, sturdy bamboo. The Katsura Detached Palace on the outskirts of Kyoto was built in the 17th century. It's considered one of the most beautiful examples of traditional Japanese architecture. And because bamboo is used so extensively throughout its structures, it's also sometimes called the Bamboo Palace. Shelter, tools and food. Because bamboo has so many different uses, it has become an essential part of people's lives in Japan. Bamboo is not only convenient for making things, it also has insect repellent and antimicrobial properties as well. This is a bamboo extract which can be used in gardens to keep insects away or also to keep weeds at bay as well. And it can even be used in bathrooms to keep mold from forming, which in the summer in Japan is extremely important, I can tell you. Uh, apparently, it can even be used in the bath. You can put a few drops in, and it's quite nice on the skin. It does have a rather strong, smoky smell, however. And that is because it's made when this is created. This is bamboo charcoal. If you look at it, you can see that it has thousands and thousands of very, very fine pores, which make an excellent filter. People will use, or will leave um, little baskets of this charcoal, uh, in a room and it will absorb odors and moisture as well. Or you can take a stick of this and just drop it into a jug of regular tap water, like so, and it will absorb impurities in the water and make it much better both for drinking and for cooking as well. All in all, bamboo is a remarkable plant and all parts of it are used in Japan. In ancient times, people also recognized that it had special properties. Bamboo grows very rapidly, with some species gaining a meter or more per day. Because of its remarkable vitality and strength, the people of ancient Japan revered bamboo as having mysterious powers. The tale of the bamboo cutter is thought to be Japan's oldest folk story. It starts in a forest where an old bamboo cutter finds a stem of bamboo that is glowing. Inside, he finds a tiny little girl. The old man looks after the child like his own daughter. 
but she possesses the same miraculous powers of growth as the bamboo from which she came. In just three months she grows into a beautiful young woman. But this girl who sprang from the bamboo actually comes from the moon and eventually she returns there. This ancient folk tale reflects traditional Japanese beliefs about the magical powers of bamboo. To this day, bamboo is still considered a symbol of good fortune and it features in many celebrations and rituals. Every year ahead of the New Year's holidays, people place bamboo decorations called kadomatsu outside their houses and workplaces. In December, craftsmen throughout the country are kept busy preparing these symbolic decorations. It's thought that the deities of the year to come lodge inside the kadomatsu. And so putting these decorations in front of your house will bring good fortune in the year ahead. The Tanabata festival celebrated on July the 7th is based on the annual conjunction of the stars Vega and Altair in the Milky Way. According to myth these stars represent two lovers who are only allowed to meet once a year. On this day people write their wishes for the future on slips of paper and tie them to bamboo branches. It's believed that ancestral spirits which dwell inside the bamboo leaves will make these wishes come true. In November, shrines across Japan hold festivals called Torinoichi. Local people come to buy bamboo rakes adorned with models of objects of great value. Rakes are tools used for gathering things together, whether in cleaning up the yard or working in the fields. Eventually they came to symbolize the wish to rake in good fortune as well. These decorative rakes are considered important amulets that bring success in business. These rituals reflect the long-held belief that bamboo is imbued with special divine powers. Bamboo is a very unusual plant. It's officially classified as a kind of grass and belongs to the same family as rice, although some scientists now think that it should be given a totally different classification of its own. It also looks like a tree, but it's not a tree. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why people in ancient times thought it had supernatural powers. Another one is undoubtedly because it grows so incredibly quickly. Most plants shed their leaves or the leaves change color in the autumn. With bamboo, it's in late spring, and that time of year is sometimes called the bamboo autumn. For centuries now, people have loved to watch bamboo leaves flutter to earth, and the bamboo sheds its leaves just around the time that the new shoots are starting to form. One more mysterious thing about bamboo is that very few people will ever see it flower. This is because it only flowers about once every hundred years, and when that happens, all of the bamboo withers and dies. There are many different kinds of bamboo, and on our next video, we're going to have a look at some of them. The ancient capital city of Kyoto lies in a basin surrounded by hills. The summers are hot and the winters cold. These conditions are perfect for bamboo. The Rakusai Bamboo Park lies on the outskirts of Kyoto. About 110 species of bamboo are cultivated inside this garden, collected from all over Japan. Madake is the most common species of bamboo in Japan. Its joints are spaced well apart, making it strong and flexible and easy to work. It's used extensively in bamboo crafts and in the interior of traditional houses. This species is called hachiku. It's one of the more delicate kinds of bamboo. The stalks grow from 3 to 10 centimeters in diameter and can be sliced vertically into extremely fine slivers. This makes it ideal for intricate craft work. Some types of bamboo are strikingly beautiful. This is Kinmei Morso. It has a golden color with green vertical stripes, which alternate from one side of the stem to the other. Unfortunately, the stripes fade away after the stem has been cut. So this bamboo can only be seen at its best when it's still growing.
Kikko Chiku is a speciality of the Kyoto region. The stems bulge on alternate sides in between each joint. In Japan, this is said to resemble a turtle shell. This is another unusual variety that can be appreciated in ornamental gardens. This is Kurochiku. The name means black bamboo, and you can see why. And yet, this green bamboo is also Kurochiku. It will turn black after the plant is two years old. Thanks to its distinctive hue, this bamboo is commonly used by craftsmen. These numerous species of bamboo found throughout the country form the basis for Japan's rich bamboo culture. I have a guest in the studio with me today, Mr. Kagata Junji, who runs a bamboo wholesaling business in Kyoto. Welcome to the program. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. Nice to meet you. How many are there altogether? Over 1,000 bamboo species around the world. 1,000? Yes. Oh, that's uh, a lot. But today, uh, I brought only one kind with me. It is called Madake. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Madake is the most popular bamboo in Japan. How does it get from this to this? Yes, the green bamboo uh, in the bamboo grove uh -huh. is cut, uh -huh. and then uh, it is heated over fire uh, to drive out the oil, uh -huh. and then it is dried in the sun for one month, and uh, the white Madake will turn from white to amber uh, after 60 to 80 years. 60 to 80 years? Yes. You leave the bamboo in a warehouse or yeah, something? Yeah, that's right. Now, what about these two in the middle here, which have these dark brown markings on them? This is called shimitake. Shimitake? Yeah, uh, dark brown marks on it. Shimi yeah. is like a stain. Yes. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this pattern is called keshiki or scenery. Scenery, yes. Yeah. And then over here we have these three here with uh, a deeper yes, brown color. Yes. What, what are these? It is called susutake. Huh. Uh, this sample is 180 years old bamboo. Uh, in old Japan, uh, many houses had a touched roof, and the bamboo was used in the framework of the oh, roof. underneath the thatch? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So day in, day out, people would have a fire burning in the house, and the smoke from the fire just goes up to the thatched roof, and this is what happens over the passage of years. Yes. How, how do these, the white, the light and dark markings yeah. evolve? You can find where the bamboo was tied with rope. Oh, I see. So the white parts are where it was tied down to a, a wooden beam or something. Yeah, yeah. And we call this pattern uh, is keshiki. So like this as well, this is also That's right. keshiki. Yes. I see, scenery. Yeah. Keshiki is the mm. most... Uh, important thing uh, to feel the beauty of Japan, Japanese ah, bamboo. Very beautifully, I must say. Well, thank you very much, Kangata-san, for you, being with Pita me today. Next, we're going to take a look at the world of tea ceremony implements and one of the master craftsmen who makes them as well. The ritual of the tea ceremony involves many aspects. The tea room itself, the implements used to prepare the tea, and the food served with it. And when it comes to the implements, bamboo is one of the most important materials. First, a bamboo scoop is used to transfer the powdered green tea into each tea bowl. Then hot water is poured into the tea bowl using a bamboo ladle. The hot water and the powdered green tea are then mixed in the tea bowl. This is done with a bamboo whisk. Whisks like this are made by cutting the tip of a bamboo stem into as many as 130 delicate slivers. These are used to whip the tea into a froth. Without bamboo implements, there can be no tea ceremony. It was thanks to the 16th century tea master Senno Rikyu that bamboo implements became so important in the tea ceremony. 
This is a vase that was made by Rikyu. He used it for flower arrangements to decorate his tea room. Before Rikyu, flowers were displayed in ceramic vases. It was he who introduced the idea of using bamboo as a material, in keeping with his aesthetic of austere simplicity. Rikyu also made this tea scoop, which has been given the name Yugami, meaning warped. As the name suggests, the scoop has a bend in it, curving to the left from about halfway down. Rikyu picked out a strip of bent bamboo and emphasized its irregular shape. He also highlighted the joints of the bamboo. Many contemporary tea scoops try to emulate this distinctive shape. The simple, natural appearance of bamboo became an essential aspect of the tea ceremony's philosophy of rustic simplicity, wabi in Japanese. This is the workshop of bamboo artisan Kuroda Shogen. He's the 13th generation of his family to work as an artisan making tea implements. His family is one of ten with a special link to the Senkei schools of the tea ceremony. Kuroda carries on a tradition dating back to Rikyu himself. This tea scoop was made by Kuroda. He used bamboo from close to the root, where the joints are bunched close together. The result is a striking piece full of natural character. Special containers are used to hold powdered tea for the tea ceremony. The depression in the lid of this fine piece comes from the natural shape of the bamboo. This water container is made of soot blackened susudake. Each piece of bamboo has subtle variations in hue and they have been skillfully arranged for the best overall effect. This incense holder has a distinctive shape, which highlights the natural patterns adorning the surface of the bamboo. Kuroda keeps more than 2,000 lengths of bamboo in his storeroom. Making bamboo implements requires a keen eye for the basic materials. Each strip of bamboo has its own specific pattern and coloration. It's keshki, or scenery. For tea scoops, customers prefer bamboo that has a pattern on it. Each strip of bamboo has a different pattern, what we call its keshki. But it's not easy to find bamboo with a good keshki. It was easier in the old days, but times have changed. There are fewer bamboo groves today. You can go all around a big bamboo grove and not find any stems with a suitable keshki. Using a strip of bamboo that has been carefully picked out after a long search through bamboo groves, Kuroda begins to fashion a tea scoop. First he soaks the bamboo in water for a day to soften it. Then he heats one end of it over an oil lamp. He makes an incision and expertly bends the piece so that only the part of the bamboo that will be discarded snaps off. He secures the bent bamboo in place with string and leaves it for two days. After that, it will hold its shape permanently. Now Kuroda begins to carve the bamboo with a small knife. The important thing is to respect the character of each piece. He says it's like having a conversation with the bamboo.
Kuroda adjusts the width of the scoop, selecting which parts to carve off to highlight the keshki pattern to best effect. He takes great care carving the tip. This is the crucial detail that will determine the quality of the finished scoop. He carves off one sliver at a time, carefully inspecting the scoop at every stage. It's a process that requires the utmost care. And then he files the scoop smooth using different grades of file on each part of the surface to give it a polish. The tea scoop is completed. The black coloration on the bamboo gives it a feel of somber elegance. Worked and shaped by skilled artisans to highlight its inherent character, the natural charm of the bamboo reveals a profound depth of beauty. bamboo. It only flowers about once a century. It's not showy. It loses its green color when it's turned into objects used in daily life. But nothing epitomizes better than bamboo the Japanese aesthetic of finding beauty in simplicity. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Every year in Kyoto's Nishiyama district, an event is held called Takeyasobi, or Fun with Bamboo. It was first started 15 years ago as a way to encourage people to regain their appreciation for bamboo. Bamboo stems are cut down and candles set in the hollow stumps. Thinning the bamboo grove like this helps to ensure it grows healthily. After the sun goes down the festival begins. The beat of drums made from bamboo echoes through the forest. The festival is popular with visitors from abroad, too. Everyone enjoys pounding out rhythms together on the bamboo stems. Illuminated by 5,000 candles, the grove has a mysterious atmosphere. It's a great way to give younger people today a sense of the ancient belief in bamboo's mystical properties. In the next edition of Begin Japanology, we look at Shirakawago, a beautiful rural village designated as a World Heritage Site in 1995, and the traditional construction techniques and wisdom of the mountain community.